Alrighty. <laughs> I'm back inside now because it was getting entirely too mosquito-y outside. Pardon me. Um, so where did I leave off? Uh, so yeah, she was a, she was a crazy girl and she was my baby and, um, yeah, she was my constant companion and I loved her dearly. She was the sweetest little thing. Um, if you, if you've watched the video that I did of, of her, you'll, you'll see what a beautiful dog she was. And that's, we got that all the time when we would walk her or whatever. And people would stop all the time and say, oh my God, what a pretty dog. She's so... And she was very pretty. Um, if she'd have been a boy, <clears throat> I think she would have been too pretty to be a boy. You know, she was a beautiful, beautiful dog. But, um, yeah, so when Fonts took sick, um, it was obviously, uh, you know, out of nowhere, as I've said, with absolutely no warning. And that first day, um, I think I had said this, that um, when the ambulance got here and I just, you know, shoved the dog in her kennel and out the door I went. So I didn't get home until probably about 10 o'clock that night. And, and even then, I mean, I didn't want to leave him. I, I had to go home um, and I had to look after her. And I couldn't, you know, she's been in her kennel for 12 hours. Um, keeping in mind that when we got her, you know, I wasn't working anymore. So she stayed in her kennel overnight because if she didn't, she would piddle on the floor um, because she, again, is a baby. Um, and of course, as you know, as most people know, they, they won't generally um, pee or poo in their, their sleeping area. Um, so she was really good about that. If she was in the kennel, she wouldn't, she wouldn't mess. Um, and then she'd be like, legs crossed when you got up in the morning. She'd be like, hurry up, get me outside. Um, so anyways, I came home and miraculously she hadn't. Can you imagine that poor animal was in there for about 12 hours? Yeah. So then, you know, she was out with me that night and I think the dog and I just snuggled on the couch for a few hours and I think I had said this before, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I'm repeating myself, I'm sure. Um, um, as soon as the sun started to come up, I, I put her back in her kennel and I went back to the hospital and I was there again, you know, all day and, and all evening and I, there really was no one for me. Um, to call to come in and look after her um, and my main con concern and focus obviously was on my husband at that point fighting for every breath he was you know the next breath he was going to take and then I guess it was by um, the evening of, of day three um, and I came home and she had her kennel like tore apart the, the tray that goes in the bottom of it we we had bought the largest kennel that, that you can buy um, apparently you can put you know like a, a a Mastiff or a St. Bernard. You know, I mean, she was a tall dog, so um, we wanted her to be able to stand up in it and turn around in it and not, you know, be like all scrunched up in this little cage, you know, um, at nighttime and that she could be comfortable. And of course, she had her bed and she had her toys and she had everything in there. But um, so, yeah, I came home and, and um, she had the, t the kennel was, was, was tore up. She even had the wire at the bottom by the door was bent. And that was her trying to get out because she'd been in there for so long and it and it had been you know this was day three and um of course I couldn't talk to Fonts about this decision because he you know wasn't able to he wasn't even conscious really yet um and my daughter was home and and I I was my daughter was home my daughter was home I think or, or I talked to her on the phone or something and I, of course I was just beyond myself and I said, like, I, I don't know, I don't know what to do. Like, what do I do? I mean, I can't not be with my husband um, because we have a dog. I got to take my glasses off. I'm getting a glare here. Um, I can't, you know, not be with my husband because we have a dog. And I can't leave the dog locked in the kennel, like, you know, 15 hours a day or more. Um, and I, and I, don't, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I think I'm going to have to take her back to the pound and re-surrender her and we'd, we'd had her three months at this point like I said I brought her home February for three and a half months um I brought her home February 1st and he had the strokes on on the 15th of of May and I think I took her back on the 18th of May so I um had called them at the pound and and of course they remembered me and they remembered her and remembered my husband and I just you know I was in tears obviously and um explained what was happening with my husband and they were like oh my god I'm so sorry and I said, yeah, I said, he's, you know, he's in, in really rough shape and, um, you know, we're not 
sure if he's even going to pull through this. At this point, it looks as though he will. I mean, this was day three, and, you know, we were starting to see some improvement. But, um, you know, they were... It must have been... I'm confused. It must have been day two, because I know that I said to them, there is some talk of transferring him out, um, but he's not stable enough to be transferred because our little hospital here can't handle him, and they're, they're going to ship him maybe to Peterborough but more possibly St. Mike's in Toronto and um, you know I, and I'm going to wherever they send him that's where I'm going to be um, and one of the girls there whoever I was talking to had suggested um, maybe fostering her and I said you know if, if, I, if I knew for an absolute certain fact that he was only going to be in the hospital you know a couple of weeks even a month maximum then yeah tell me, tell me where to take her. I'll take her myself and, and, you know, drop her off to, to be babysat, you know, by someone else for, for, you know, whatever length of time. But at that point in time, it looked like my husband was going to be in the hospital for, you know, weeks and perhaps months. I mean, he, he could have been in rehab for six months, you know? And, um, I said, if, if we do that and, you know, when he's, um, you know, finally home and I can pick her back up, well, let's just mess with the dog more than she's already been messed with. I mean, she was found running. God knows who her original owners were. She was a year old. Um, found running and skinny as a stick. And then adopted by us. Brought to this warm, comfortable, safe environment. We're her mom and dad now. She's home. And then all of a sudden, she goes to live with another family. And then a couple months goes by and I come back. And say, okay, come on, let's go home. And now her foster family has become her family. So, like, let's just bounce this dog around more than she already has been. She's been through enough. And, um... Sorry, guys. Um, I think that for all concerned, that the best thing... I mean, it, this is all about her. And it's not about what's best for me. Um, I think what's best for all concerned is is that you guys just really you know try to rehome her try to find her another forever home um so the following morning i i took her back to the pound and um i walked in there and i was like hysterical i was just sobbing so hard and of course she walked in there and she was like hey what up i mean she you know this is where she'd come from these are these are her peeps you know <laughs> these are her old friends because the staff there is just top-notch beyond beyond top-notch they're just amazing um she walked in they're all happy big smiles and when i walked in with her they went that's ruby they couldn't believe it like she was twice the dog she'd been like not fat but there were no ribs there were no hip bones sticking out um she'd gotten taller she instead of this you know shivering little skinny horrified little creature cuddled in the back of the kennel here was this bouncy vibrant happy you know obviously well fed well cared for dog and i brought all of her vet papers with her um from the from the vet veterinary visits that she'd had and they could clearly see i mean we'd only had her for three months and she'd been to the vet like i said two or three times she'd had her leptospirosis shot she'd had wellness visit um, and that we, um, you know, obviously we're taking very good care of her and that this really serious major, um, you know, emergency health issue had arrived, had arrived, arisen. Uh, so, um, and I said to them, I just, I don't have a choice. I said, she's been locked in her kennel for, you know, a good 15 hours a day, if not more for the last three days. And this is, you know, this is day four i guess it would i i'm getting confused guys day three day four uh, god i don't even know it's, it's such a that first you know like i said the first three days even into the fourth day is just really you know jumbly um but anyway so of course i was crying really hard and they they said to me if you there's a little room off to the side here um if you want to go in there and um If you want to go in there and um, sit with her for a few minutes and um, <sighs> trust her roll the toilet paper and, um, you know, say your goodbyes in private, then, you know, you, you go ahead and do that. And they said, take as much time as you need. I mean, if you need to sit in there for an hour with her, then, you know, you go ahead. So um, I went in there with her for a couple of minutes and 
took her off her leash because, you know, you're in a, a closed room with a closed door and then she's safe. She's just kind of wandering around the room, sniffing everything. And I'm saying, Reeve, come here, come here, come see mommy, come see mommy. And uh, she was too busy sniffing everything. But, um, yeah, um, it was making it harder to sit in there and, and it was it was dragging it out and I had to get to the hospital to, to see my husband and um, yeah so I came back but we were only we were only in there maybe for a couple of minutes and um, I came back out with her and I and of course I'm crying even harder if that's possible and I said to them it's, it's just it's making it even harder and they said okay you know we understand and I had uh, whatever her favorite toys that she hadn't mangled. <laughs> she, if you bought her anything with a squeaky in it, so I'm sure that you've all seen, you know, these squeaky flat squirrels and squeaky, you know, whatever. She at one point had a mallard duck that sounded like a duck with the squeaky in it. She would rip that to shreds until she got the squeaky out. She just, it's squeaking and she needs to know where that squeaking's coming from and she would rip the shit out of it until she got the squeaky out of it. And then it was like, meh. <laughs> she didn't even really play with it anymore, but you know, she had some favorite toys. And so I took her favorite toys and her, she had a, a pink blanket that, a dog blanket, doggy blanket that we had bought her and um, her collar and her leash and all of her belongings really and um so uh that was it and i gave her a kiss goodbye and i walked out and there was some staff outside and they came over and they all gave me a hug and they said i'm so sorry that this has happened to you and you know to your husband obviously and i'm sorry that you know the situation has has made it that you've had to bring her back um, but you're right, and you can't leave her locked in a cage, for heaven's sakes, you know, for three quarters of every day, um, uh, and you can't, you know, stay at home with her while your husband is in there battling for his life after having three strokes in one day, so you're doing, you are doing the right thing, we want you to know that, that you are doing the right thing, we completely understand, do not think for two seconds that we're thinking, oh, that's nice, she brought her back, you know, don't think for two seconds that we're thinking that, we know that you guys took really good care of her, and we know that you loved her, and we're sorry that this happened and if you want to know um you know what becomes of her um you know give us a call in a couple of days because i don't think she's going to be hard to adopt out now now she's spayed she's um you know gained some weight she's healthy she's you know she doesn't look like this half starved little waif anymore she looks like a really healthy happy dog and she was so pretty and they said you know she's i don't think she's going to be here long i think she'll she'll find a new home pretty quickly so I was going to do that, and and I couldn't. I think it was just, um, again, it was drawing it out. And I, and I kind of regret that now in a way, because I do think about her all the time. And I miss her. And I really hope that whoever adopted her um, didn't adopt her to be like a hunting hound. I hope right now... She is lying on somebody's couch like a couch potato watching TV and, and somebody's spoiled baby suck like she should be, you know? And if you're not prepared to treat your dog like a child, then you shouldn't have him. Um, and, we were, and if you can't provide an appropriate environment, then you have no right having that animal. And once all of this happened, we, we just couldn't, I couldn't provide an appropriate environment anymore so I really I just didn't have any choice and so I left and as I drove away I could hear her barking inside the building and I I mean she was just barking at the other dogs but of course to me it was you know mom mom where are you going right so yeah so that's our uh, that's our Reba May story and uh, if anybody watching this knows anything about her um, because I'm sure that she did get adopted legally. I would really love to know, um, you know, what became of her and, and, and like to know that she found a forever family that 
you know, treats her the way she should be treated and that she's happy and healthy and, and well loved and well cared for. Um, so yeah, so that was, that was a, a hard one, guys. <laughs> but anyway, that's the story of our Reba May and have a look at the, the video of, of her that I did. Um, and you'll see what a pretty girl she was. And I, you know, I do look for her, like, you know, thinking that she got adopted locally. And I mean, everywhere you look is people walking dogs everywhere. Here in our own village, you know, in, in town, anywhere. And, um, and I do look, and I know my husband looks too. And every once in a blue, blue moon, you'll see a dog that's about the same height and kind of the same color, but not really in the, in your driving. And you get a bit closer and you're like, is it, is it? Oh, no, it's not. And we've never seen her. So I, I don't know, you know, where she, where she ended up, but wherever she is, I hope she knows that we loved her very, very much and that uh, we're sorry. Um, I don't think I will ever get over the guilt of having to take her back to the pound, but, you know, I know that I did the right thing. I know that I did the only thing that I could do at the time. And, uh, yeah, so that's it, guys. Thanks again for watching me ugly cry. This is it, I swear to God, unless something really funky happens, I swear from here on. You know, fonts at this point, as I said, we did the old corner turning at this point, and things just went up from there. So yeah, I swear, last sad one. Okay, I will see you guys in my next video, and I love you. Please uh, like, follow, share, comment. Please, please, please. It, it means the world to us to know that we have uh, love and support out there, okay? Mwah.